everyone, thanks for joining us for our lesson on springs, spring rates, and spring style. Now, Jeremy's gonna answer a few questions I have because um, there's a lot that goes into this and every time I think about changing stuff, there always happens to be more than one school of thought on this and which way to go with it. There's, there's tons of schools of thought. <laughs> there's tons of I schools mean, of options are galore. So we just talked about our springs and spring spacers. So let's start with the factory spring because this one looks not like the others. Correct. Right? Correct. So if we start with this guy here, um, it's there, everything's just equally spaced out and it just looks like it's, it's a small a, spring. It's a very basic cost effective spring, you know, made by the OEs. Uh, straight rate coil, which means the rate from the top to the bottom is pretty much the same all the way through it. There's, you know, it's designed it's to... A it's a linear it's rate a, spring. It's a linear coil. Okay. So it's designed to just perform a specific function, you know, very basic, you know, your average consumer to get in a vehicle drive, this is all they need. Okay. And then... So, so let's start here. So when we talked about the lift, um, we need to get some extra lift out of it. So what, what size lift was this? Uh, that's an inch and a half uh, spring seat spacer lift for a JL or a JT front. Okay, so I have my vehicle. We have our spring. We need a little bit more lift. We literally install this onto here like so, and we're good. Yep, that gives you your inch and a half lift. You're done. <laughs> all, all said so, and done, you're good to go. Right, but now that didn't actually change any handling characteristics or dynamics or, or anything like that. So if we're wanting to go beyond this, right? So I'm wanting to add weight, but I'm wanting the vehicle to perform better yep. on and off road, you've got to get rid of this linear rate spring. Well, th there are companies out there that do offer taller linear rate coils. Okay. You know what I mean? And there's many companies that do it because it's a simpler, easier design, very easy to do. And it's very simple to tune with a, a very basic shock. For, for customers. Okay, it, so, we're, so with that, so we're talking about keeping the cost down and I guess less complexity or, or less chances of kind of messing things up if you start, how to, how to just walk me through that part of it. Like the, why would you go this route? Because it's the simplest thing to do. Okay. Um, as far as a manufacturer is concerned, you know, you're not getting any, what I would consider cool guy stuff or any extra features out of the coil. You're just getting extra lift out of the coil, which can be done with a, a spring spacer. Right, so, and that might work for some people. Oh, absolutely. So absolutely. if you're just, I just wanna throw tires on it, I don't do anything other than get in it, drive it to work, drive yep. it home, and I just wanna throw tire, like bigger tires on it, and I, and I don't have a budget, I don't have a big budget. Right, and you'll see a lot of companies do that, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, but now I'm becoming a little bit more of an enthusiast, right? I put my spring spacer on, maybe a little bit taller spring, but now I got bit by that off-road bug because I went off-road one time or, or it snowed outside and I pulled somebody out and I went to a ditch and helped somebody and now you're like, man, this could be kind of cool, but now I want to upgrade a little bit more. Um, now different companies will offer different so, upgrades for different styles, right? Absolutely. So if we get into styles, let's run down the styles really quickly just so you know. So we have what we started with here, which was the linear, the linear rate, which yeah. is just a single. The, the basic progression of a coil is you typically go in, you know, coil spring world is linear mm -hmm. to a progressive to a multi-rate and there's multiple facets of multi-rate coils out there. So when you're looking into multi-rates, you want to understand how their multi-rate function, coils functions work. You know, some companies use dual rates, some triples, some, you know, go up to even, even quad rates. Even quad, quad yep. rates. So single, and then let's set up a dual right here next to the single. Go ahead and stand that up. Okay. So we're going to look at, of course, this one's taller, but here, go ahead and point out why this is a dual so, compared to the single. So basically, when you're looking at a coil, they're all basically made out of the same uh, coil wire diameter. And the way the windings are spaced out will determine the spring rate. And this is for the common aftermarket coils. Okay. There are some coils that use tapered wires and do a bunch of uh, fancy stuff that's usually typically done by OEs and not available as much to the aftermarket. But you have your, your tighter wound windings, and then you have equal spacing throughout the rest of the coil. So this is what is called a dual rate coil in functionality. The top section typically does not function as you're driving the vehicle. Your ride rate and all your ride parameters are determined by the bottom linear section. Okay. The top rate will help keep the coil seated under a lot of droop, so you're not having the coil come loose and possibly fall out of the vehicle. Okay, so your dual rate, so this here, as soon as you put weight on it, all these tight ones are gonna collapse. Correct. And then you're riding just on this single right here. Exactly. But the dual rate, what happens is, as you go off road and your suspension starts articulating, these coils will kind of unwind yep. and keep Keeps the spring 
taunt captured. in the vehicle. Yep, okay. exactly. So this is kind of your next maybe step up, but we do have a third rate and a fourth rate type spring. Correct. So what would be a pro and con? Uh, let's let's start with what are the, what are the pros of going to? Now this is going to be a something a, of the form of a, of a triple rate. Right. You know, again, you have your tighter windings that'll be collapsed in the vehicle. You'll have your effective ride zone of the coil, which is your, your, your typical ride rate where the coil is gonna be performing a function for you know, your average build, your average use, set up okay. for on and off road. And then you've got a firmer rate on the bottom that is designed for, you know, you'll start to transition in ultra hard cornering on the street, but mostly off road when you're getting into the whoops and you're starting to drive the suspension into the bottom, this extra rate is coming into effect to help load stabilize the vehicle so you're just not driving into the bump stops every time you hit a bump. Okay, gotcha. So this one you're almost gonna have, so this again, the top part's gonna be collapsed. Yep. That's gonna be the capture and part. And then your typical ride zone is typical so, four or so five So this is inches. gonna provide what, like a softer ride on road because it, you're sitting in a- It, in al a it allows you design in uh, different rates. And now the, the rates are spec by the designers. Okay. You know, but for us, yes, we, we typically get to design in a softer ride rate over that area because we know where they're going to ride and that's how we want our stuff to ride and having the third rate as what we call a catch rate will allows us to make up for the soft rate under hardcore off-road use okay so you're not going to really get into this until you start to push the vehicle so you hit exactly. a bump or or maybe you're just cruising down a dirt road and you don't see a drop yep. off or see something that's that's where you're going to kind of right you're, push into that spring you're going to catch it like the, the analogy is what's the best way to stop a train you don't run in and stop a train, bam, head on. You stop a train gradually, and then it increases its rate of deceleration to stop a train, which is exactly how the coil works. Okay, so are there any drawbacks to a, a triple rate? No, I mean, I mean, you know, obviously there is more tuning to be done with a, a triple rate over a, a dual rate or a linear coil being the most simple to tune from a manufacturer standpoint. So it could be if, if a company possibly didn't take the time to make sure all three all right. three rates were, were correct. And so it, it's more up to the company. It's more, more do, so really you wanna do your research and make sure that the company's really invested in the vehicle that you have. Cause we're not just talking about Jeeps here. This is gonna right. go across the board with any kind of vehicle that you have is that you wanna make sure that you're not just buying a lift just because it's cheap because they may say, oh, we've got triple rate springs. Yeah, right. but. <laughs> and you, could, you could design them wrong and the vehicle <laughs> right. will ride completely awful. And right. it will handle awful. You know, it can be used. It can be too soft, and then you're doing this down the road. You feel like a boat going down the road because it just doesn't have the proper rate at ride. In the pairing that you're going to see in the advanced class on the pairing of a shock and to a coil is is ultra critical to that performance and ride and handling as well. You know, right. there's there's the marriage of the both that will have to happen in order for it to feel the optimum for the, the occupants. Right, and like Jeremy said, we have that over in the advanced course where you don't want to just buy springs and then separate shocks. You do want to make sure that you're pairing them together properly. Head on over the advanced course if you want to learn more about that. All right, so I see we have one more spring on the table. Yep, and this one's very specific. You'll see it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's Well, this, this way? Which other, way? Other way, all right. There you go. Um, see, I'm learning right now too. You know, in, in the truck world, trucks, especially in the back of trucks, you'll see Ram 1500s, Ram 2500s, Jeep Gladiators, and even some JLs and JKs with, they're using so many different loading conditions out of the back. We've had to go to a quad rate coil, you know, to, to get the long travel, obviously we have um, your, your collapse section. We've got a short standard ride section and an immediate transition because when the bed is empty, there's no weight in the back. Right. You know, and then as people start stuffing in gear and stuff like that, we transition into the third rate when it gets full, you know, loaded up heavy. And then there's an anti-bottoming rate on the bottom, just the same analogy of the stopping the train, you're into the GL, stopping the truck from hitting hard. And on. so that one is actually built into this last coil, yep. right? This it's is like gonna be the, the tightest yep. into the winding, okay. Into the way the geometry is of the coil itself. Gotcha. So this is gonna be more specific to, like you said, to trucks. Yep that you're gonna to go to a fourth rate because you don't want it riding like an empty dump truck when, you're, when you are right, empty, when you it, still wanna have some kind of exactly. give and, and on-road manners. Because most people aren't running around with their truck fully loaded all day long. It's usually, we, you know, a We are. We, yes, <laughs> you are. And we well, can't wait to see what you guys do with your JT. That's gonna be pretty awesome. But, you know, in order to try to, you know, and, and this is a compromise, by no means is this, am I saying that this is the best coil on the planet for everybody. You know, there, there's compromises that people make when it comes to designing a coil 
to perform a given function for a given vehicle. Right. You know, and this one is the best coil that we thought possible for our lift height for the JT based on how we wanted it to perform the loads we expected it to cover. Well, not just that you thought possible, you literally did what you thought, put it to use, decided to change it, put it to use, decided to change it. So on and on and on, this wasn't like a, okay, this is the height we want, here's the, here's the four rate coil, and we're good to go. Um, right. You went back to the drawing board multiple times. Multiple times on, on choosing the stance that we wanted to offer, the, the load rate transitions, I, I believe it was like six times that we prototyped the rear coil. You know, and we have the benefit of working with good coil spring manufacturing that, you know, we work on our dyno here, we have them dyno the OE coil. So on these coils in particular, you do know the factory was a triple rate coil in the back of the Gladiator. So you have the chart that says, hey, this was at this load height, it was this a given so number. So you had all that. You have the information and then you figure out how to manipulate it to perform best for your application. Gotcha. So you can see here, there's a lot more that goes into picking a coil spring than to just go online, find the cheapest coil spring and say, hey, a four and a half inch is a four and a half inch. Oh, absolutely. That's just simply not true. And every manufacturer has their own um, thought process put into their coil. So it's very important that people understand what they're, what they're looking at when they're getting it. You know, for the JT, some people are advertising a dual rate rear coil. Well, you just knocked out the functionality that the factory had. You so the factory had three and right. some people might go, and then some aftermarket goes to two. Right. So, uh, <laughs> so you definitely want to make sure and ask questions. You can, I mean, ask questions of these companies. And one of the best things to do is the off-road world is blowing up so big right now is that ask people, like ask people that had it. I've seen people put suspensions on and change them two, three times in a year because they get it. They're just like, I, I can't stand the way this rides. Right. But instead of them talking to people, I've seen them just literally throw one manufacturer after another. And then sometimes you find out that what they did was they just bought springs. And then again, we have an advanced course. They went and brought their own shocks or, or because which, they thought XYZ company had the best shocks ever. Yep. And maybe they do. But it but, all depends what they're tuned with. <laughs> exactly. Make, it, make your ride or what you're right. covering in advance. You'll see a lot of people throw dollars at coilovers and find out, well, these aren't tuned for the way I want them and go back to a coil and shock and have much better results. Right, and now we've gotten into coilovers in the advanced section and a little bit further down in these lessons as well. Yep. Um, okay, so Pretty much wraps progressive or, or, or linear, linear? Progressive, dual rate, triple rate, and quad rate. <laughs> but, I mean, again, these, these all fall under a multi-rate category. You mm. know, so you, and it depends on the companies that design the coils as to how they're gonna function in your vehicle. Right, yep. okay. Well, I hope you guys learned a little bit because I know I just did. I always have questions every time. And this goes across the board for anything that you might have. I mean, this goes with IFS vehicles. This is solid axle vehicles. Yep. You always want to make sure that you're buying stuff that's paired together, um, especially checking out the companies with these springs. This is, this is the foundation for any lift kit is the springs, whether it be on the coilovers or you know basic coils and shocks. That This is the foundation. All right. Well, thanks for joining us, guys. Let's move on down to our next lesson. <laughs>